Hello everyone, my name is Vlad and I would like to quickly show you a little overview of my avionics um, based on models Mini Uni 2 and Mini Uni 3. We're gonna be using the example of Mini Uni 3 as the quick overview of the functions which this unit has. So, first of all, the, when the unit starts, you can see the artificial horizon, which is intent to give to pilot the information about current position of the airplane in the air. At the right side, we have the uh, number position here for the altitude. We can set our field pressure using the knob. All controls of the unit are through this knob. Plus, for the larger version Mini Uni, Mini 3, we have two buttons here. For the smaller version, which is Mini 2, we don't have buttons, we just have a knob. So controls are a little bit different. So basically we can set up the field altitude and the field pressure and have the field altitude set. Also, we always have a density altitude, which is also important. So right now our temperature sensor reads 35.5 Celsius. It can be switched to Fahrenheit as well as the speed can be switched from knots to miles per hour and altitude can be switched from feet to meters if required. As well as the pressure can be switched from inch to pascals and um, that's or, or bars. Again, it depends how you prefer to have it. Here in Canada, I prefer to have everything in knots and in feet as well as in uh, inch AG. So, basically, here we have a density altitude for this temperature automatically calculated. This will show you a vertical speed. Here, obviously, we have the magnetic compass information. This information is taken from the GPS. However, if we connect our external magnetic compass, we will have information here taken from magnetic compass. You can see this letter T here, which means true. If we connect a magnetic compass, it's going to switch to M, which is magnetic. Now, in this window, we can see the airspeed information. Here we can have the outside air temperature, and here we can have a GPS information. When it says no GPS, means no GPS is connected. Otherwise, it will show you the ground speed. Now, as in the middle right here, we have the sleep skid indicator, which actually ball, which shows us if we're sleeping or skidding. The back side has speed on static ports. And actually these units are available in two versions, either GPS only or GPS plus speed on static. If it's a GPS only version, you will only have speed taken from GPS, track taken from GPS, and but altitude will be still taken from the built-in pressure sensor. For the version which is a full version with the pitot static, you will have the airspeed here. So, if I push with my finger inside of the pitot port and create some sort of a pressure, let's say we simulate we're flying, you can see right away we're getting some um, airspeed here, with the same time we're getting this line strip which is with a little letter saying R for rotation, white color, white green strip and vertical uh, strip with the VX, VY, V flaps extended and more. Right here we immediately have the two blue triangles which show us our turn rate. So basically that's the turn rate for the two minute turn or standard turn rate. It always depends on your speed. Here we have true airspeed, which is calculated based on the um, temperature and altitude. And obviously we have uh, right away pressure altitude, which I already um, uh, spoke about. And yeah, this, uh, the, there is orange line and there is even the red line. And you can configure the each speed, each segment of the speed through the menu. So that's mainly the main screen for the uh, artificial horizon. Now, some versions of this unit also have additional screen, which is the compass. And this compass, it's again based on GPS, unless you connect external magnetic compass, then it's going to be based on the magnetic compass. You have a heading bug right here, you can you can uh, change the heading bug heading indication here. Uh, 
Uh, and you have a ground speed right here. Next uh, screen you have is the time, which is the UTC time, local time, which can be set, uh, flight time. Flight time is basically, it's automatically calculates as soon as you airborne. So as soon as you ex um, reached and exceeded the rotation speed, we assume you're airborne, so we're gonna be calculating your flight time here. And as soon as you land, we're gonna add some delta time, like a couple of seconds, and assume that you have landed, so your flight is completed, and you can see your flight time here. So it's gonna be updating all the time when you're flying. There is an independent timer, which can be started and stopped and reset if needed, for example, for fuel tank switch. Also, the next screen is the just a local time. So that's basically a local time. Uh, and here we also have a flight time because, for example, someone may say I want to use the smaller unit, which is this version, for the fact of having a, just a time. So, well, let's say it's going to be a big, uh, <laughs> big clock in your panel. Here we have the same flight time as previously, but this time flight time will be calculated in the uh, decimals. So it's basically decimal flight time, like 1.4, 1.6, 1.9, and so on. Also, we have another screen here, which is the oil lifetime. Uh, oil lifetime is calculated and summed based on all flight times. So basically, here, as soon as you reset it, it's going to calculate all your flight times and give you in decimals your oil lifetime, which I guess is quite useful, especially if you are lazy like myself to calculate everything in the book. So, well, yeah, maybe it's going to work for you. We have a G meter. It's, it's a classic G meter, which shows you the uh, your G positives and negatives. And obviously the highest value will be recorded here for the positive and here is for the negative. And that's a current G, like 0.96. Uh, the next is the altitude on the screen, which shows you your altitude, density altitude, vertical speed information, as well as the field, uh, uh, field pressure. And finally we have a voltmeter, which just measures the connected bus and uh, voltage and just show you the uh, voltage on the bus. So that's basically the main functionality of the unit. Mini 2 unit has very similar functionality. And the only differences between the larger brother and smaller brother are that Mini 2 doesn't have two extra buttons. So here the controls are all done through this knob. And, well, basically it's also, also the same. So if you rotate knob here, you switch the field elevation. If you shortly press it, you're gonna travel through the, uh, through the um, screens, like through the different modes. If you push and hold it, you're gonna open up the main menu. If you again push and hold it, you're gonna come back to the um, artificial horizon screen. So uh, it's very similar in functionality, as I said, but just for convenience, the higher uh, the higher model, like the model Mini 3, has uh, two extra buttons uh, around the knob here, while this model doesn't have. Also, there is a little difference between the two displays which are used here. This one uses the high brightness LCD TFT display, which is sunlight readable. It's very bright, it's super bright. There is the light sensor here, ambient lighting, you can set up either the uh, constant value for the brightness, like fixed value, or you can set automatic brightness based on the ambient lighting. While this model has the true transflective technology screen, which is sunlight readable again, it's a little bit different screen, it's less bright if we compare between two, however, it's fully sunlight readable. So this screen, just this display just uses different technology for the, the uh, uh, like to fight with the sun, right? To fight with the bright sun. So it's basically uses different technology to stay fully readable during the direct sunlight. So it's just two different uh, types of the technology used in between those two units for the for the displays. Both uh, units utilizes the micro SD card on top here, so it's very easy to perform updates and also both units have built-in flight recorder 
automatic flight recorder which records all flights, all parameters, and those parameters can be exported out of the unit in the Google Earth format, for example, in other formats. And let's say in Google Earth format, you can easily review the track of your flight, including altitudes, on the Google Earth map, which is really cool thing. That's really cool to review your flight. And especially, I love that because when I do some flying uh, and uh, when we I do some upper air work, I really love to see what, what I actually was achieving and what I was doing, like those uh, slow flights, those steep turns the spiral dive. So that's basically the main functionality of the unit and for the uh, model num for the model 3 all switches between the menus are handled through the right side button, the button at the right from the knob. And for the smaller mini unit 2 model all those switches between screens are handled just by pushing the knob. So basically you just push the knob shortly and it's gonna switch the screens. Now, there is obviously a menu here, so we can access the main menu by pushing and holding the knob for the three seconds, and we're right away immediately getting into the menu. In this menu, we can change variety of different functions. We can adjust, change, uh, we can set our V speeds, we can, um, we can do lots of things. For example, for example, if I want to change the current time, let's say I want to put a minute ahead. So, Time in minutes, right now it's a 14.05, let's say it's a 14.06. So, I select the line I want to change. Uh, after that I push knob shortly, my line highlighted in blue. Now let's say I set it to six, it becomes red, means it's not the, the value which was there. And I push shortly again on the knob, that's it, new value is recorded. So, the um, operation of the settings menu is quite simple. To exit this menu, we again push and hold for the three seconds on the knob and we get back to the, um, to the main uh, artificial horizon screen. So that's the main functionality of the Mini 3 and Mini 2 Mini Uni Series units. And I will make more videos showing more functionality and more um, settings. Uh, at the end, I would like to add that all software updates for this unit are handled through the micro SD card, which is as simple as that. We copy update files from the computer on the micro SD card. After that, we shut down the ma master avionics switch. I just disconnected from power. So I pushed and I'm holding the knob down. And now we need to actually put power into the unit and wait. As soon as power is on, we immediately see bootloader just started. That's a bootloader to update your internal firmware. So once again, you shut down all power. You basically switch off the unit. You push and hold the knob. And while you're pushing and holding this knob down, you turn on your avionics or master, depends how you wire the unit switch. And in a few seconds, you will see the bootloader menu and you obviously insert your uh, micro SD card here and you press verify button. And you see there is, a, there is a firmware update here and if you would like to proceed with this update you just hit this button again. We don't want to do that, we just want to reboot but otherwise if we push this button the update will start and unit will be updated. And the manual for this unit gives more details about this process which is, which is quite simple. Now the unit boots up, starting up, and uh, yeah, that's that's basically it. Unit just started up. Thank you for watching, and uh, see you in new videos.